Hi, good afternoon, friends. Thank you for joining me today on a Wednesday, May the 15, 2024. I'm thankful today that it's been a quick and heavy load of work and stress for a day, but yet, uh, one of my colleagues had a bad morning. I was able to um, pray over her and reminded her that we can put the devil, stump the devil, put him in his place, which is under our feet. And she was all teared up this morning. But in the midst of my busy day, busy morning, I was able to guide her, minister to her, uh, where she was all teared up. And God has granted her peace in the name of Jesus. So it started out as a bad morning for her, ended up with a good, good, good day for her with two good news and I'm thankful that God has answered her prayer and I rejoice with her and I pray for all of my ladies friends who's looking for a new job and I pray that God will bless her and all of us to be in the right place of assignment where our jobs are concerned in Jesus name so today I want to refresh from yesterday rest and refresh uh, as we go in through um, Dr. David Jeremiah. From fascination to faith, do you live a fascinating life? Do you live a fascinating life? So today I don't uh, have any plan to share with you, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit to lead us. So Matthew 11, 28, 30, as I read to you the um, yesterday, come to me, this is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's in Matthew eleven twenty eight thirty. So yesterday, um, rest and refresh, as Jesus reminded us, in John seven thirty seven, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. That's the word of our Lord through John in John chapter 7. So that's why um, Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And Matthew eleven twenty eight thirty also goes together with um, 1 Peter 5, 7, to cast all of our cares upon the Lord because he cares for me. And then Philippians 4, 6 through 8, to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Let me read the entire um, Philippian um, 4, 6 through 8. It says, be careful for nothing. So, this is in a King James Version, but in another version, it says, be anxious for nothing. So Philippians 4, 6 through 8, don't worry about anything or be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And then the peace of God that pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And then Paul lists it. Um, in Philippians 4, uh, uh, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatso whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things that are good report, if there is any virtue, if there is be any praise, think on these things. So we're not only to cast our care upon the Lord in First Peter 5, 7, but Paul reminded us to not be anxious or to not be careful or don't worry about anything. So I'm going to snapshot at that scripture. I like um, the King James Version as well as the New Living Translation. So today, let me pray and then read today devotion. Uh, not all days are like this. Have you had a bad day? So re God reminds us not all days are like this. So let me go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for all my uh, viewers, my subscribers all around the world. As they view my channel, bless every one of them on this Wednesday. 
um, some of our church has Wednesday night service um, but today I want to share this um, devotion not all days are like this bless every one of my friends ladies and gentlemen and all my co-workers bless our employers for blessing us for um, for generosity and for new good news coming our way in the workplace in Jesus name so not all days are like this sing to the Lord with thanksgiving according to Psalm 147 7 like I shared just a minute ago I will bless the Lord at all time his praise shall continually be in my mouth according to Psalm 34 1. Alexander White a famous Scottish preacher was known by his people as a man who was very optimistic and positive I am optimistic as well. He always prayed and devoted the first two or three sentences sentences of his prayer to gratitude and thanksgiving to God. On one particular miserable Sunday in his church, about 90% of the congregation could not even get to the service because of the weather was so bad. Rain, snow, wind, and ice were not, were hauling around the church. Dr. White got up to pray and his people wondered what could possibly, what he could possibly say that would be positive in his prayer that day. We thank thee, O Lord, he prayed, that it is not always like this today. Wow, that's what I love. We always find something good out of the bad situation. I love that because that's how I am. Recommended reading is Psalm 147. We're going to read that after this. We thank thee, O Lord, he prayed, that it is not always like like it today that it is not always like it is today perhaps you're having trouble feeling thankful today regardless of your circumstances and mood you can listen you can lighten your heart today excuse me and bless god's heart by developing your own personal thanksgiving prayer make a mental list think of things for which you you've never before express gratitude thanksgiving is a great antidote for self-pity and it's an effective cure for the blues turning point for this um, devotion today is count your blessing name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done jonathan oatman jr or john johnson oatman jr so count your blessing, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. That's what my mother-in-law um, comment was before she passed away, sitting in that wheelchair after being um, in leukemia for most of her adult life after giving birth to her last child, which is uh, my, my husband's um, youngest sister. And she uh, was in the wheelchair but she, on one occasion when we visited her up north, we, uh, we sat outside and had the longest conversation. My mom loves to chat with me um, after meeting her for about 12 years before she passed. She loved having those long conversations because we only visit her once or twice a year. Um, thankfully, we were able to visit her more before she passed. So she reminded me to count your blessing, name them one by one, and it surprised you what the Lord has done. Here it is, uh, a lady in her 70s sitting in a wheelchair and reminded me to count your blessing. And now I know she's with the Lord because as I shared with you before, she prayed the sinner prayers with me and my husband on um, one of the visits that we made up there north. So I don't know what you're going through today, but I hope that giving this um, this um, devotional, not all days are like this. So we always have to find way to give thanks to the Lord. That's why I have this on my desk, to bless the Lord at all times. I will praise him. I will bless the Lord at all time, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth so not to give the devil any 
any um, any room, not to give him any room, not to give the devil a foothold, in other words. So, and remind myself to be anxious for nothing in everything by prayer and supplication with with thanksgiving let all your requests be made known unto god and then the peace of god that pass all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in christ jesus so i don't have any book to share today but i want to read psalm 147 as it is in today's devotion psalm 147 in the NIV, praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. That's in verse 3 of Psalm 147. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the numbers of the stars, and he calls them each by name. Can you imagine God has a name for each stars? So tonight, well, I don't know about Virginia, we had a lot of rain, but if you're able to look up in the sky tonight to see the star, just imagine this, the Lord God Almighty he determines the number of the stars, and he calls each one of them by name. Can you imagine that? Great is our Lord, and mighty is in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God. Let me see what the other versions say. trying to find authorize the Lord okay great is our Lord mighty is in power his understanding has no limit the Lord sustains the humble but cast the wicked to the ground sing to the Lord with great grateful praise and make music to our God on the harp and then the authorized King James Version says, Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praises upon the harp unto our God, who cover the heaven with clouds, who prepare rain for the earth, who make grass grow, grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beasts his food, and to the young ravens which cry, he delight not in the strength of the horse he take not pleasure in the leg legs of a man so in niv it says he pleasure his pleasure is not in the strength of the horse nor his delight in the legs of the warrior the lord delights in those who fear him he delights in you friends who fear him who put their hope in his unfailing love. Extol the, the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down his hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. In verse 19, he said, he has revealed his words he has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. 
So God loves you. He knows, wrap it all up. He knows the stars by name. He names each one of them. So you are important to God, friends. You and I are. So let me see what I can find here for the next five or six minutes to read. Let's read about Esther in Discover Your True Worth. So if he, if God can name the stars, each one of them, like I said, in Virginia, we've been having a lot of rain lately. So I don't, I doubt if we can see stars tonight, but where you are, if you can see the star, just look up in the sky and know that the Father God has a name for each one of them. Esther, more than just a pretty face. Best known as Queen Esther, Esther was not even her birth name. Her parents, about whom litter is known, gave her the name Hadassah. The woman we know in the Bible as Esther was a Hebrew orphan, a Jew, raised as a daughter by a relative Mordecai in Persia. You can read that in Esther chapter 2, verse 15. Vashti was the reigning queen of Persia. Her husband, King Ahasuerus, Ash, mm, considered her beautiful, so beautiful that he enjoyed showing her off. One fateful evening while Ahasuerus had a group of friends and advisors visiting the royal palace for a seven-day feast. Get that. So they have seven day feast back to back. So at the, the King Palace, had a group of friends and advisor visiting the Royal Palace for a seven day feast. He called Vashti, his wife, to come to the throne room wearing her royal crown so that he could display her beauty. But the queen refused to come. You can read that in Esther chapter one. Uh, Ahasuerus, the king, was astonished and engaged and even perhaps embarrassed. Get this, say you have a lot of guests and your husband, pretend he's the mayor and he called for his wife. Hey, sweetie, comes. I want to introduce you or I want to show you to all of our guests. And she's like, I'm not coming down. Imagine the embarrassment. So... Ahasuerus was astonished and enraged and even perhaps embarrassed by her behavior. His advisor immediately counseled him to talking about not calling your husband a master, right? Like Abraham and Sarah. So this is what the count this is his advisor immediately counseled him to get rid of her which mean to divorce her, worried that if she was allowed to refuse the commands of the king, other women would also despise their husband because she represented all the women in, the, in Persia. So if she refused to obey her husband, all the women's going to be like, well, if the queen didn't come forward, why should I? Why should I respect my husband, right? So being a being the queen, not um, not respecting her king, so so the council said to get rid of her. Word if she was allowed to refuse the commands of the king. Looking at my time, other women would also despise their husband and bring chaos to the king. With this strange turn of events, Vashti. Be Vashti's behavior became Esther's passport to the palace. So let's kind of go together. Not all the days are like this. So the king wasn't looking for a wife, but while his current wife, while his current queen disobeyed him, so he got no choice but to be looking for a new wife now. So despise their husband and bring chaos to the king. With this strange turn of events, Vashti's behavior became Esther's passport to the palace. So that means 
Now the king has to look for a new queen, as we all know the story. The king must have a wife. I'm going to read this and then wrap up with a prayer. Vashti's rebellion result in her banishment from the throne, so she lose her position as a queen. The king called for a new wife and launched a search to find the most beautiful young women in all the Persian lands. Esther chapter 1 verse 19 and chapter 2 verse 1 through 4. Esther was one of the women chosen as a potential candidate and Mordecai warned her not to let anyone know she was a Jew. Each day Mordecai walked by the court of the women's quarter quarters at the palace hoping to find out that Esther was doing well. The preparation process for candidates hoping to be the king's new wife was in intense. With a full 12 months of beautification treatments, a different woman was selected each day for the king to see, according to verse 15 through 17. Now, when the, t when the turn came to Esther, for Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of the uncle of Mordecai who had taken her as his daughter to go in to the king she requested nothing but what Haggai the king's eunuch the custodian of the women advised and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her she so Esther was taken to the king Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his, of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. So, she set, so he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Rashti. So there you go. It pays to respect and honor your husband, right? Because when you refuse to do that, you lose your spot of royalty. You lose your spot of blessing. So I'm closing with that. Just to share with you from the story of Esther and from the word of our Lord Jesus Christ to from yesterday to rest and refresh because I felt like I felt like my viewers need to hear this can you imagine all the tense the intense all the obligations all of the do's and to-do lists that you have whether you're a housewife or a teacher or a student or even a manager or a leader in the corporate sector corporate world all the to-do's list so just let it let it lay it down at Jesus feet cast it on cast all of your cares upon him because he does care for you so that's why Jesus word in Matthew eleven twenty eight is very important you should put that in your agenda to come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love that. So yesterday's message kind of go together with today, right? So from rest and refresh, you can find rest and refresh in God, in Jesus in his word and today's message is not all days are like this and then we can learn from uh esther esther bitter better or sweet no excuse me wrong one esther more than just a pretty face so she gained favor with the king and she became the queen of persia because um, the the king of Persia's wife Vashti did not submit to her husband therefore she lost her place as a queen 
So that wrapped up for today um, devotional. I hope you have a great Wednesday. Like I share with you, I had the opportunity to encourage my coworker while I had a stressful day. But when you, when you encourage someone, when you bless someone else, your day, it's like you're sowing. It's, it's the law of sowing and reaping. Luke 6, 38, say it well. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. When you encourage somebody, you will be refreshed yourself. You water other, you also will be refreshed and watered. Let me pray. And until next time, friend. God, thank you, Father. Bless everyone that's watching me today. I pray that they have a blessed evening. Bless all of my co-workers and bless all of my, my leadership team and our employer to get everything done. And bless all of us who are supposed to be certified this year to get our certification in a timely manner. Help us to stay focused and study well. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you.